I'm getting ready to wax coat some beehive frames. So sorry that I am, I could zoom out on this some. I saw that zoomed in from last night. So I got some beehive frames. They come wax coated, but these are new frames and I wanted to add more wax to them. The bad thing about it is I don't have a whole lot of room right now. So I literally had like all of Amazon just showed up out of the blue today. Like I didn't even order all of Amazon. Amazon just said, you know, Ed just buys everything. Let's just send him the whole warehouse. And I literally had about 20 boxes worth of stuff show up today. And I have boxes sitting everywhere. All right, so I've never actually done this before. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I bought two different roller brushes. One has this little hard harder brush that seems like to me I'm thinking is going to be better than the other one I bought which is more foamy and I have a pan that's on low the lowest setting my stove will do and I touch the pan but it seems a little too hot now I didn't have any beeswax so I just bought this off of Amazon 100% natural yellow beeswax by beesworks one pound bag and I'm going to try to melt this in this pan, which is going to be from this point forward, my dedicated beehive beeswax melting pot because I stopped using uh, Teflon coated pans some time ago and I only use cast iron now to cook in. And I didn't want to ruin my good cast iron pans to do this. So I've seen a lot of people do it in like an electric skillet. I'm going to try to do it on this on low. If it seems too hot, I'll move the skillet over. We'll just see how this works. No idea how much I need. That seems to be melting pretty good. I've got a couple frames here. I got a whole box of frames there. I got an empty box back there where you're not going to be able to see all this stuff. I probably need some sort. Why do? Why am I never ready? Because I wing most of these videos. That's why I'm never ready. What I mean by wing is I literally bring all the stuff in to do a video. I set up to, I basically just turn the camera on and, and go with it. That's basically how I do videos. I'm not going to melt a lot of this wax initially. I kind of want to just do what I got going here. It doesn't actually seem like it is. Uh, it's melting at a pretty slow rate now, so I'm thinking it's probably going to be okay at this temperature. Which will work out perfect because I didn't really have a backup plan. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm winging that too. But yeah, so I didn't want to do a lot until I figure out if this is going to work. Because I only got a pound and I got uh, around 20 or 30 frames to coat. Um, so my wary hives don't require me to do this. Because the frames in wary hives are built entirely by the bees. Like you don't use, they don't even have uh, frames with foundation in them. So wary hives in that aspect are actually easier to use than Langstroth hives. However, if you're going to do bee inspections, Langstroth hives are definitely much easier than a wary hive. Wary hive, the bees build the comb. Instead of using frames, they just have a top bar and they build the comb down and they attach the comb to the sides of the beehive, which makes sense. And then you can't pull the frames out to inspect the bee colony or the bird's nest or for mites or anything like that without destroying the comb. 
So what that leads you to do is that leads you to not do B inspections because then you don't want to mess the comb up. And uh, I've had wary hives now, I don't know, three or four years. And I decided this year I was going to add a couple. When I expanded, I was just going to add some more Langstroth hives and see, you know, use them maybe for a year or two. And then I'll make a decision from that point on which hives I want to use in the future. And of course, I'll always have the other ones um, that I don't decide to use. So uh, this is now melted. Let me lift this camera up so you can see. Is my microphone even on? So this is now melted. Can we see in there? Probably not. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, you can see it's now melted. So every time I've seen people do this on YouTube, they basically dip the brush in and then just roll it on the... Uh, so that's what we're going to try. No idea how this is going to work. They go pretty fast, like... Something like that-ish. I also don't want to have an excess amount of wax on here. Oh, this actually isn't too bad. Wow, this seems like it works pretty good. So glad I watched those YouTube videos, right? To know how this was done. So basically I'm just going to have to... Uh, now, I've noticed that a lot of people say that you don't have to really worry about getting like not every piece has to have wax on it. You just need some additional wax, which is then what the bees take and make the comb out of. So I'm not going to worry about it if it's like perfect or overlapping or any of that stuff. I'm just going to try to get as many frames done with this one pound bag of wax as I have before I run out. And the other thing too, I don't even really know, like can it be any beeswax? This is the only beeswax I have. So this is what I'm using. All right, so this seems like it's going to work pretty good. I'm going to put some more wax in there now. I don't want to dump the whole bag in there because I think then I would have an excess when I'm done. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can kind of see the wax. You can see the like white on the dark. That is wax. Everybody says it doesn't really take much, so hopefully it's going to be good. Now i got to move these over to the other box and start stacking those up. So what I suspect is, is that the bees are currently building out comb in the new uh, deep box on the Langstroth hives. They've been in there actually a week and let's see Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. They've been in there now about ten days, and I estimate that it's probably going to take about about maybe two or three weeks to fill up the bottom box, and then I'll need to put another deep box on. So these frames are for that next deep box. I did not wax coat the five frames that were originally used in the bottom box because I didn't have the wax. I didn't didn't have nothing. The NUX showed up, had five frames in it that already, you know, the bees were already working on, which went into the bottom box, which is a 10 frame box, which means, you know, that I had five frames that didn't have any wax on them other than what come from the factory. And these frames do have wax from the factory. Um, it's so thin, like you can feel that it's, there's a little bit of wax on it, but you can't see the wax. Let me show you. So see, you can you can feel it like it feels waxy. If I run my finger across there, it feels waxy. 
but you can't actually see the wax. So I'm putting just a little bit of wax on there that then allows me to see the wax. And the theory is that because there's wax on there, the bee, it can help the bees build the frames, build the comb quicker on the new frames. That's the theory. All right, so like every video, the camera shut off because, like I said, I wing everything, and that means that I didn't switch out to a fresh battery when I started that video. And I hear my phone over there blowing up. And since this is still melting, let me go check my phone real quick. All right, so back to what I'm doing. Uh, issues on the phone taken care of. I put three more frames up here. Going to roll this around. Just going to try to do this quickly. You know, again, I don't need to use a lot of wax. The other thing was, too, I don't know if I needed more than a pound I mean I could have bought more but I didn't want to use it oh, that frame's actually kind of discolored I don't know why can you see it does it show up in camera nope it doesn't show up. but so I didn't know how much wax I needed one thing and I didn't want to buy more than I needed because the bees naturally produce wax What I suspect will happen is that as I get better at this, now why is that wet? These were these frames were out in my building, and I think a raccoon got in there because they were all laying on the floor when I went out to get them all ago. Yeah, so this little brush seems like it's doing a really, really good job. Of course, I am almost out of wax again already. I'm, um, I'm more than half done with this batch. But I still probably have another 10 or 15 or maybe 20 frames out there to do yet. pouring down rain so I had originally intended to do this one day like later this week but it's pouring down rain and since I can't do anything outside that I really wanted to do I'll just go ahead and do this because I have the free time right it's not like I ain't got time to be lazy I if I can't work outside I got to do stuff inside and that's, that's just the way homesteading is. And especially where you get to like a point where I'm at where, oh boy, where you're just constantly behind. Like there's literally, you know, always, always more that needs done than I can really do, you know, than what I've really got time to do. So. This time of year, especially spring and fall, that's really the only time it gets that way. Like dead of summer, it's, it's not quite that bad. You know, dead of summer, we can enjoy ourselves. But spring and fall, when you got like garden going on and the orchards waking up and bees are coming out to do their stuff.
So it's just like you you always have a whole lot to do at once that you don't have other times of the year. Now once all that, you know, once the garden's planted, once the orchard is um, pruned, once you've got your first round or two of copper and neem oil on your fruit trees, then they're good for a while and you know about the time that you're getting caught up the blueberries will start blooming or actually well the blueberries are already bloomed but about the time that you're starting to get caught up on the garden like you finally get all your summer crops stuck in the ground that's when it's time to harvest blueberries and then as soon as you're done harvesting blueberries that's when you harvest blackberries and as soon as you're done harvesting blackberries then that's usually about the time your mulberries are ready <laughs> And it's just like one thing right after another. And then about the time you get that done, once the mulberries are done, um, then you're probably starting to come around to strawberries, which is in June. And then uh, about July or August is when like your early apples and pears and stuff like that start to you know, be harvested. It's just crazy. Like people, I don't think people really get how much work is involved in a homestead. And all the time that I'm doing the work, you know, it's like, I, I've, I've really made an effort this year to keep up on videos because I've talked about this before. I've probably recorded hundreds of videos that never got published to YouTube and they didn't get published simply because I didn't have time. And I was like, why are you recording all these videos if you're not ever going to upload them? And uh, a lot of times, like, I would record a whole entire video and not realize that I lost sound. Like, either the microphone come unplugged or battery died and I didn't realize it. Or the video footage was unusable. Now, not every video is that way. I actually went back and re uh, edited some videos and uploaded them just here recently that were older videos. But you just never know what you're going to get. Uh, the, new, the new video camera likes to... Battery likes to die all the time. Mid-recording. It's like they don't, they don't have any warning for... <laughs> for when your battery's going to die. Well, like you're recording a video and you just look up and your camera shut off. How many more frames? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine frames there. I got 70 frames over there. And then I've got probably... Um, I got 10 in the 10 in the building, 70 over there, 9 right here, and I've already done 11. Yeah. So I'm not going to have enough. I'm going to have enough to get the the first um, 30 is all I needed to do. So once I do these and then the 10 that are outside, you know, I'm, I'm going to have enough because I'm I'm about halfway done with this bag now. And that's, that's going to get me at least past the next hurdle, which is going to be in about between now and then maybe the next seven to ten days when i got to expand and add another deep box. Anyway, so got that done. And uh, again, if you are into homesteading, beekeeping, goats, rabbits, chickens, um, gardening or orchard I do a little bit of everything around here I also do some hiking as leisure time and uh, if you're into that kind of stuff don't forget to subscribe to my channel I greatly appreciate it if you have any questions or comments about anything in any of my videos don't hesitate to ask one thing I keep hearing over and over again from people that do ask questions on my videos is how responsive I am that's because that I'm such a busy person, I'm probably awake about 20 hours a day. <laughs>